So which chased me? Drove me off the road? We gonna John Wicker ass? Oh hell yeah. Oh, it runs so smooth. Whoa. It's like butter. Before you say anything, I know you don't remember. Just listen. Look behind you. Right? The fireball you just saw enter this cave? That's the witch that burned down your church and everyone in it. I'm ready for one of the, the four obvious questions now. <clears throat> uh, who am I? You are the priest, Padre, the patron of that there burning establishment behind you. And you might not remember, but it was vengeful rage that had you up, end up in that tree. Where are you? Or who are you? I am your conscience, the angel on your left shoulder. Or a hallucination, whatever fits to make you focus at the task at hand. It's important to us both. The only thing that you need to know is that we've been friends for a long time. Where am I? You're standing inside of a cave. That cave leads to a portal that in turn takes you to a dimensional state called Sulfur. It's sort of the waiting room for the true afterlife. I'm sure you'd have another name for that concept with your profession and all, but you'd be still be surprised as to its nature. Where am I going? The most important question. You're going to follow that goddamn witch in there. There are places of pure natural energy that she will want to visit. We can only match her strength if we to to utilize them. You might have noticed that death and time isn't really as rigid as most expect. There are ways to undo all this. I will help you. I heard everything I need to hear to motivate me. <laughs> wow. It runs so good, I can't get over it. the wakashi, wakashi. cool this game is awesome There it is. Bring me closer to it so I can absorb some of its primordial essence. You won't need to use it to teleport home right now, as that would be a waste of time. Knock yourself out. Wow, they got so many bullets.
I should have asked more questions. This is like an old school game. This reminds me of. So that's like stairs. I'm already lost. Keep playing too. I have no idea what's going on there. Ah, uh, not from the grave this time, eh? Ka, bless the Lord. When we noticed the curse was lifted over the town, even if I felt the hope of in my cold old heart. Yeah. <laughs> Those are not sort of are nothing sort of ecstatic? What is that you're smoking? Pure sulfur. It's a nasty habit, but let me tell you, it's a hell of a lot easier to come by in a place named after it. That's for sure. Hot commod commodity, but also not very cheap. All right. Any more questions, Curious George? What can I do here? You can repair your stuff at Ralphie's inside of the church. Brilliant mechanic, that one. You can store items, money, ammo, and stash chests. They're all, all linked right. up. If the others weren't lost somewhere out there, there'd be plenty more to do. Items to buy, etc. You can also go back to any area you've previously been. Just follow the paths. Anything else? Where am I? This is a church called the Original Sin. As a reminder, that we're all sinners. Okay. Doors always been open to anyone, regardless of their past, hence why the majority of us here seem to be, let's call it, innocence impaired. <laughs> the humble saloon swinging door symbolizes this. Anyone is welcome here. Noble idea, of course. Lord knows we're all better for it. Shame it was also this idea that doomed us. Ka. Well, what do you mean doomed us? <laughs> Well, our open door policy seems to have attracted some unwanted attention from a particularly evil witch who infiltrated and pretty much killed all of us, except for you. But hey, you're here right now anyway, which is nice. The place wouldn't be the same without you. <laughs> Anything else? What about this dark matter with the eyes? Right. We've been cursed to stay here. One could say being in sulfur is a curse within itself, but these evil barriers are stopping us from going anywhere or doing anything about it. We're all hoping to move on to the next life at some point. Okay. Anything else? There, I got it right. That's interesting. Ralphie, <clears throat> so father, need me to look, take a look at that piece? 
Yeah, I think some of my stuff could use repairs. It's crazy. You have something to sell, perhaps? Chamber chisel. Whoa, this game is insane. Robot plate solution. Repair kits, laser sights, sniper scopes. Oops. This has to be Unreal Engine 5. There's no other explanation. <gasps> what? Caves. Reminds me of Duke Nukem. Where did they come from? Game is awesome. Stick grenade. The gravity is pretty, pretty crazy. Next level. Are they all procedurally generated? I gotta, oh, I gotta change the name of the title. I'm playing Sulfur now. The Shriden game was pretty fun though. Oh, they got me. Hold on a sec. Let me change the title name. Is this a roguelike? We're gonna see now. I got like 160 FPS, which is pretty nuts for me. I missed this cap, just capped at 160. Oh, it just went down again. Oh, back up. Yeah, this game runs so smooth. Oh, 
Next level. That hurt a lot. Alright, your goblin. Seems like it's procedurally generated, but I'm not sure. Which is really cool. And also, this is only a demo. Where'd he go? Pretty cool. Now if I can figure out how to use these. Oh. Gain health over time. How do I eat it? Okay. Beauty. Now, which way did I come from? I'm gonna guess it was that way. There's something up there. A meaty mushroom. Okay, that's a dead end. Can't be. Can <clears throat> gotta be another way. Okay, here we go. Throwing knife. Let's try it. Out. <laughs> I miss. My sensitivity is a little too high for this. <laughs> Do you kind of eat some of these? Yeah, yeah. There were boots for rain. Oh, I only got one. <laughs> That's hilarious.
You gotta find both of them. Okay, so I came in through here. That means I gotta go out through here. What is that? <laughs> this game's awesome. Oh, my Dirk ranked up. Durka Durka? shirt oh man the directors are rough Plus 33 ammo, nice. So, Father, you need me to look at that piece? Uh, repair? This is something to sell, perhaps. So I got 60 coins. a lot more points I think There's gotta be something I could buy we'll buy a scope soon oh these sell for four This bitch good money here.
Damn, he ate those. Oh, Chad, why did I do that? Uh, it will be learned. So it is a roguelite. But there's a stash. Confused. How does this game even work? What game ninja is this made on, dude? This is amazing. Oh shit. Wait, is this just water? Oh. I can see people doing like only sword runs of this. Zoomer mode. All right, we're gonna sit back and chill with this one. Maybe I should be in it. We should get set up here. Get some more stuff going on. Presented by Five Hour Energy. Now we missed it. We've seen most of the showcase. Want the ultimate here. IGN experience? Check out IGN Plus. Members get exclusive deals and giveaways. Well, I'm seeing Ad free lots, browsing, though. unlimited tracking on our national interest. I've seen all this. 33. Expedition 33. Let me see something. It features like personal notes that save to your IGN account and a region selection tool that lets you cruise around the biggest maps with ease. 
IGN maps load faster with more markers than ever and are built for your phone as your constant companion to the biggest games. So start checking off markers for the games you are playing for free at IGN maps today. Have you ever been stuck on the same quest for just way too long? IGN strategy guides and interactive maps are here to help. IGN guides are trusted by millions, easy to use, and of course, free. You can even track your progress with handy checklists if you go for 100%, just like we do. IGN has the very best, most complete and accurate guides for The Legend of Zelda, Tears of the Kingdom, Baldur's Gate 3, Cyberpunk 2077, Hogwarts Legacy, and so much more. Every guide is tested and verified for you by experts. Just search for IGN. IGN Playlist is the best way to track your game collection. Now you can even import your entire Steam library to Playlist, making it easier than ever to review games, show off your collection of the world, and finally chip away. Every year she paints again. And every year, and paints again. And if That's the game there, Expedition 33. Oh, sorry, guys. Some you see some surprises. <laughs> There's a lot to talk about. Who better to talk about the present and future of Xbox than the Xbox himself? <laughs> they want to hear from you, my friend, not me. <laughs> Phil Spencer, thank you and welcome to IGN Live. Thanks, thanks, Ryan. Thanks, everybody. So your energy is incredible. We have one hour together on the dot. And we have some friends coming in halfway through some other awesome Xbox developers. So people who actually I, build games. I don't, yeah, I, yes. I don't want to waste a second with you here. And I want to start. Uh, I'm, I'm, I said this earlier on this stage. I think you just had the best showcase you've ever had. I really mean. I said it before you got here. Thank you. you definitely did. It really was fantastic. Now I know you plan these things months and months in advance. For anybody that doesn't know, that like the planning for this starts like the beginning of the year kind of thing. That's right. It's crazy. So I'm curious. At what point do you, with this one this year, do you get a feeling that, oh, this one's looking pretty good? Yeah, you know. Don't be humble. Just tell us the real <laughs> answer here. <laughs> Honestly, like, until our fans, the customers, you guys give us the feedback, like, Aaron Greenberg and I were talking about this two weeks ago. Yo, now, what's up? The thing that probably hit me we're the watching, most. Um was obviously just the passion of the this teams is the Xbox showcase. putting their amazing work on stage and seeing so many teams do great work. They just, they just put a say two months ago, dude, banger after banger after the banger of scale of in the, the showcase. Yeah. How much work the teams were doing to show up. A lot of them, though, might not be bangers for you because like, they're open world. I was, I was in awe of the show. But there's some there There's that you would definitely find interesting. Metal Gear Solid, for instance. Some other stuff, too, but... Um, the, the one that I, I said, right, for me, uh, of all the great stuff from today, He's trying to look through here now and see. The show for me it. was something I wasn't expecting to see today again. There's like a new age in mythology, a new perfect that. dark. Perfect dark. Uh, yeah. A first person spy espionage, some parkour, a little mirror's edge in there, yeah, which I yeah. love. Um, all, a new like, Hunter like, X like, Hunter, if yeah, you can like, see it. And that game's been cooking in for the a way long there. time. It has. We followed the Our partners at Crystal. It's the new Hunter X Hunter there. game. Yeah, it's a fighting game. It keep going. So what has it been like for you to kind of follow the very yeah, dude, long it looks amazing. trajectory There's of the that There's an Indiana Jones from, game. You know, it, it started with, with Daryl Gallagher starting a studio. And Just now, down the street. Yeah, and now we're finally here. Like, So how has how it been kind of getting to this point with perfect Dark. we're also yeah, playing you know, in parallel building a studio while you're building a game and something that perfect yeah. dark back to n64 and obviously us with bdz on 360 like there's just such anticipation for that also game. playing and sulfur i, I really Have appreciate this game? everybody's patience because we've been talking about this for a long this time. game is awesome and, dude like my team can verify this it's when like I a roguelite, and one you have a stash and everything, like you got like a, <laughs> an inventory, for and there's like a cellar and stuff. This is the one. And just so proud of the team. And just look at the graphics. Um, and it, it really just came together so well. And I mean, a cool little story. 
uh, Daryl had our other so studio good, heads down at the studio just yesterday and walked through that same section. Yeah. In so I think it's procedurally them, like, generated level. Being played, and I, I love seeing our community of creators coming together that way. Well, another, uh, the, the one like more thing, which we were all goblins for, get not, was a new Gears you're, you're a priest, but it, and your church was burned down by like a, a it witch. It wasn't Gears Six. It was not. It was yeah, go into her little so, caves and well, kill you know, her. You're, you have a visibility <laughs> into everything, but but I'm curious when you're in a meeting with maybe it's Matt Booty, maybe it's Alan Hartman, but the coalition folks like when you learn that they've gone down just different the guns you can buy road, the yeah. prequel road rather than Gears. Like, what was your reaction when when you found out that that was going to be the next? direction for Gears of War. Well, you know this, we, we've had some changes in leadership of the studio. Rod, who was there, is now leading Diablo for us. So I actually thought, a Diablo game I'm playing a ton of, I thought it was a nice opportunity for that team to establish their Gears, right? And going on following on Gears 5, just because the numerical thing, like I think it would just, it, this was an opportunity for that? them to take it back Screw to an up. origin story yeah. that I know you know. Yeah. that has a lot of like real depth to it in terms of emergence day um and tell that story through the coalition as it is today i thought like what a great opportunity i was excited and then we you probably saw i know you heard it the mad world tune in the oh, yeah. place oh yeah like for those of us who remember the 360 commercial like yeah, how iconic 360 was that years of work. so when they went back and sourced that and brought that through the piece i think it just showed that they 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 kind of Stay true to what Gears is, but tell a new story, new arc. Now, you're wearing a very cool Xbox Pride shirt today, but a year ago at the Xbox Showcase, you freaked out people like me by wearing a Hexen <laughs> shirt, which is a game that I have very near and dear to my heart. And uh, now, well, then too, you had just acquired Hexen. You own that yes, as a part yeah, of many yeah. other things. But then today, I, I see the reveal for Doom the Dark Ages, and I go, well, wait a second. How awesome was that? Hold on, are, like, are, are you secretly making a Hexen game in the Doom universe? Because I know you and I share the love for this. Yeah, no, I would like to say I'm, I'm, I'm actually smart the enough Doom to predict anything nuts, like that. I wasn't. But definitely, if you look at Doom Dark Ages, Ooh, and the hell thanks this? to Marty and the team, they let me introduce that. Arbiter. Right, so I got to come out and... Like I was going through all my old school stories for those oh, as old no. as me who remember it's Doom 1 on a floppy going, my only PC that could run it was my <laughs> PC at Microsoft. So I would sneak it at oh, night, God, put I it in no so I could up. play. So the opportunity to stand there and get well, to the shoots Doom, once, so and then shit to Dark of... Ages, which definitely yeah. had some Hexen in it. Um, and I just thought Hugo and the team, fantastic work. I'm so proud. Now, I can't help but bring up uh, something that's been a topic of conversation a lot recently, which is uh, that Doom the Dark Ages is also going to ship on PS5, something yes. that you've done yes. with some other games. So can you, can you from to, uh, a business level, like, can you walk me through, you know, you paid seven and a half still million play dollars Dark and Darker. to acquire Bethesda ZeniMax. So what, what's the calculus, like, what's the, the process there for deciding, like, okay, new Doom, let's keep it multi-platform as it has been or rather than or just put it on xbox so what's what's kind of the the thought process there well on doom it's definitely one of those franchises that has a history on so many devices yeah i think they have like doom running on a lawnmower somewhere yeah. um, when you go back but um and you know it's a franchise that i think everybody deserves to play um i'm really proud of what the team and to be honest like i was in a meeting with marty and the team a couple of years ago and i asked marty what he wanted to do um, and he said he wanted to ship it on, on all platforms. I said, let's go do that. Doing pretty good like, it was as simple as that. Now, I want to bring it back, though, because I get a lot of HD. questions about, hey, if I'm an Xbox owner, what does it mean? And what I want to say, and I thought it showed up so well in the, the show today, you saw an amazing collection of games bullets. that are coming to Xbox. They're going into Game Pass day one. And oh, Game Pass showed up again, so well. If you buy the game on our console, you get to play it on PC, you buy it on PC, you get a, so the cross entitlement stuff is all there, you know, and, and we're focused on future hardware with forward compatibility. Oh my God. Our commitment to our Xbox customers is you're gonna get the opportunity to buy or subscribe to the game. We're gonna support the game on other screens and you are gonna see more of our games on more platforms. And we just see that as a benefit to the franchises that we're building. Oof. And we see that from players and the players love to be able to play.
Well, uh, that was thank close. You. There you go. I, I have to do the journalistically responsible thing now and bring the bring the mood down. Otherwise, the the, the internet would tear me apart. So I wanted to ask you. You you haven't really commented publicly much in the last couple months. So. Uh, I wanted to ask you about the studio closures and, and Tango Gameworks Ooh. and some of the you know the, some of the thoughts behind the okay. the decision making there. I mean, you had a a critical darling in Hi-Fi Rush. You had uh, folks like Aaron Greenberg saying it checked all these boxes for us oh, and no. did all the the right things here. So, Fuck, uh, dude. like, what? Walk me through the de the the decision of of why. Really, Tango specifically, not to not to disrespect the other studios that that uh, were closed, but that was the one that really seemed to kind of stick in the community's craw a bit. So, uh, I'm hoping here that you can take the opportunity to to address that closure and, and some of the recent changes in Xbox. Yeah, the closure of any team is hard, obviously, on the individuals there, hard on the team. And I try to spend all of my focus, as you said, I haven't been talking publicly about this, because right now is a time for us to focus on the team and the individuals. Oh, yeah, it's GC obviously hot take. a decision that's very hard on them, and I want to make sure through severance and other things that we're doing the right thing for the there, individuals on the team. Um, it's not about my BR, it's not about Xbox BR. Oh yeah, that's what it's I was going to tell you. Teams. There's a game the called end, Clockwork over and over, Ambrosia. I have to run a it's a Metroidvania company and grow, where you and that means sometimes find I have to make hard decisions that uh, frankly are not decisions I love. Crafting pieces and you put together mods. To go make. Um, we so you will like kind of like mod your we gun. We will continue to invest in what we're trying to picture, go do. Picture Mega Xbox Man, but you mod and your build weapons. build the best business that we can, which is ensures we can continue <laughs> to do shows like the one we just did. And it's kind of like steampunkish. On, uh, on the you know the, the Activision Blizzard saga, you know that's that's all been that probably maybe called it saga. Well, I don't know. Did, did it, it, it from just from covering it and watching it, it felt yeah. like it put like five years on my life. Yeah. As somebody that covers Xbox, I can't imagine how it was for you. But as that came to a close, uh, and you started integrating them into Activision Blizzard King into Xbox Studios, ha has that changed the way that you think? I haven't about seen anything on Metroid Prime Four yet. Because the, the, the organization just got quite a bit larger, like yeah. almost overnight, in a, in a sense. Um, no, I mean, we're still, and I, I hope we show this today, we're going to be about building great games for people to play, about giving them choice on Xbox to go play. We've got a broader library of games. The thing I'm starting to see, which I really love, is the organic collaboration between our teams that are coming out um, and trying to build that community of creators that, I mean, you this and I will awesome. go back to the time of Xbox where we basically had four games. Fable, Forza, Gears, Halo. And dude, we would oh, just literally dude. every four years. Fable gameplay just and came out. And I would have to come to E3 oh God, and somehow so try to make those four games seem different every year for the community. Um, and now what we have in, in gaming is so just an amazing things. collection of, of teams and franchises that are doing great work. So uh, I think dra you know, Dragon I, I feel an added responsibility as somebody who loves this industry for the franchises New that show World. up on our stage. But, that um, was but I still showcase. think in the end, it's about putting amazing games out. Like I'm oh, really proud shit. of the work that Ninja Theory did with Hellblade and how Hellblade's been the response to that. And we have an amazing internal team now that's focused on us doing a bunch of Unreal games as an example. Um, and then you see things like South of Midnight, which might have been my game in the oh, show. Oh, I thought put it stuff so in good. there. Um, you got Perfect Dark, you have Gears. So like for us, as the organization gets bigger, I think it's just see more keep important that, that we can take bets together uh, and try to do innovative, creative things. Um, and that will continue to drive us. All right, well, we've got to take a very quick break, but we've got lots more Phil Spencer talking all things Xbox right here on IGN Live. So don't go anywhere. Green tunic. IGN Live is presented by Lenovo Legion. Have you ever been stuck on the same quest for just way too long? IGN strategy guides and interactive maps are here to help. IGN guides are trusted by millions, easy to use, and of course, free. You can even track your progress with handy checklists if you go for 100%, just like we do. 
IGN has the very best, most complete and accurate guides for The Legend of Zelda, Tears of the Kingdom, Baldur's Gate 3, I'm trying not Cyberpunk to all 2077, these new games. Hogwarts Legacy, There's, and um, so much more. What other ones I got? Every guide is tested and verified for you by experts. Aloft, Just search for IGN. Fallen Aces. Well, this is a IGN cool. playlist is the best way to track your game collection. Now you can even import your entire Level Steam library extraction. to playlist, making it easier than ever to review games, show off your collection of the world, and finally chip away at that massive backlog you keep meaning to get to. IGN playlist, check it out. The average Cinefix story, IGN has just the thing to pass the time until Rockstar turns us loose in Leonida, GTFM. A brand new original show all about GTA. Tune in for hard hitting Grand Theft Auto 6 analysis. GTA. Who is Jason, anyways? The internet's biggest and most out there fan theories. I would make the argument that based on the universe, it's oh actually my God. Interviews with the most infamous stars Oof. of past Grand Theft Auto games. Call me Franklin, all oh, y'all want to say, <laughs> or Mr. Clinton. And so much more. We are back. For everything GTA, it's GTF. -em. Only on IGN. IGN Playlist is the best way to track your game collection. Now you can even import your entire Steam library to Playlist, making it easier than ever to review games, show off so your collection of the world, oh and finally chip away at that massive backlog you keep meaning to get to. IGN Playlist, check it out. Tom. Tato Goblin Fish Brain. Welcome back to IGN Live. Give it up for Phil Spencer yeah. joining us at IGN Live. They had the we PC Gamer so Show today, too. Phil. Um, you know, you and I in the past have, have talked a lot about the past of Xbox because there's a lot of great memories, but the, the present, as we saw today on the Xbox Game Showcase, is great. Can't the future me? looks super promising here. Uh, and and the, the the Xbox business has has changed dramatically. It has dramatically, no yeah. Uh, uh, just in the past few years, and so on the, on you know with the, when you make a, a a seventy almost seventy billion dollar acquisition, do do you start hearing from your bosses more? Or are they still? Staying out of your way and letting you run the business because that's, you know, that's not an insignificant amount of money to spend on. It's definitely not an insignificant amount of money. No, I, the support we get from the company and my boss is the CEO of Microsoft, Satya Nadella. Hey, Satya. Um, you know, we are given a ton of leeway to go and run and grow our business. But I'll say the thing that we challenge ourselves to do is to try to do new things. Like, I think if I go back, Eight years ago, we said, hey, we're going to go ship all of our Don't games crank. on PC and console. And if you buy one on one, you get it on the other. And I got some, like, reaction from people of this is the worst decision ever. Like, this is going to be the end of Xbox. And we announced Game Pass. And we started doing Game Pass. And I know some people looked at that and said, oh, you're going to teach people all that these games, games are, free, are coming out for uh, uh, Game Pass, too. And you're going to undermine too. the value in games. And what I can say sitting cool. here today... From our decisions them. on cloud, on Game Pass, on console, like right now, including the new we Call of Duty, which Xbox is crazy. Console users than we've ever had in the history of Xbox. Hey, thanks for the follow. I appreciate it. And even when I look at things like the impact of Game Pass, because I watch that and I love Game Pass, like how it showed up in the show today, I think was fantastic. But well, we also want people here. to be able to buy games. So I go back and I look and I say, okay, over the last five years. What's happened to third-party game yeah. game sales it's on our platform? Ooh, we're, on, we're up double digits every year over the last five years on game sales on Xbox Wait, consoles. I need to heal. So when I look at it, I will just, you know, doing a $70 billion acquisition will push us to try to do more. It'll push us on cloud. It'll push us to go find customers in new places, continue to think about access to amazing games, enabling creators to do great work. But I actually think for the team, that's just a self-motivation that the team has, oh. and it's fun to be a part of. Black Ops 6, day one game pass. Black that's Ops 6, sweet, right? Like, so I many people imagine. said I wouldn't do that. Yeah, <laughs> most people in this room have probably been used to spending 60, 70 bucks on it every year. Now, if they're already subscribing to Game Pass, and good to go. But it's a choice. Like, 
it, we didn't say to anybody, you have to subscribe right. to play. If you want to buy Black Ops, it's great. It's, it's great for a trust, it's great for the developer. If you want to subscribe, it's also great. Like, I want to give you the choice on how you play your games and who you play with and not try to do slimy platform things to force you to do Ooh. what I want you to do. Give the players choice and what they want to do and who they play <laughs> with. So, the, the Activision Blizzard thing, you know, we watched it play out uh, in, in courtrooms and regulatory with places. my tie on yeah like <laughs> I, i'm curious what what was the biggest <laughs> so unexpected crowd. challenge Woo! for you and the team at xbox during the course of that you know for the management team like sarah bond Lori wright linda norman who's our lead lawyer at xbox like the distract we all had our same job of running xbox and doing the things that we needed to go do matt booty but then we actually added like this second job in the time of having to work through regulatory. And I didn't like, it, it, it's, it's my fault as the head of the business. I didn't really realize that in the beginning is. of what a drain that would be on the team. And I think we saw that. Oh my God. I think we saw it in our execution on a couple things that we were doing multiple things at that, time that we hadn't planned for. And I'll say it's really nice to be post the acquisition working Wait, with those amazing those? teams. I mean, I, I, how they showed up in our show today, fantastic, what right? I just thought it was great. I mean, we had World of Warcraft in an Xbox show. Like, it's just crazy. What, was yeah, there ever a point in the process? Because it, it really, between the CMA and the FTC and, and all these places. There's a ghost? Was there ever like, a point where you thought, oh, this might, this might not happen. Like, this might get, get uh, rejected. Well, we always have to plan for all contingencies. Yeah. Like we consider everything. Like it, you have to in running the business. So but we felt like stuff, yeah. we were on the cool. side of right. Like in a, a meaning, we weren't doing this so we could pull Call Dude, of the Duty ghost from PlayStation me players. Up. What, it was what, never what in was our plans. I mean, I think my whole inbox leaked on the internet. So if anybody <laughs> wanted to find that, that was the plan. Have you seen Dark and Darker yet? And it wasn't there. So we believed we were on, in the right on getting this deal done. Um, so we stayed convicted, but there were dark days. Like, with a, you know, when the CMA came out and said, no, this isn't going to go through. And, you know, the, the drag on the teams, the teams at Activision, Blizzard, and King, like, they're dealing with this uncertainty. So it's so nice to have it pass behind us. And now we can just focus on building great games Have you ever together. played it? You know, on that topic, like, we talk about Last all time these I huge it, changes to not just the industry, it but again, was like, uh, I don't, don't know what engine they were using. It was a lot worse than it is now. Years. Now it's what really nice. What is <laughs> today, like, as we sit here now, what's the thesis statement? What's the modus operandi for, for Xbox Did you still want to play it tonight? And how has it changed over the last five years? Yeah, and I, I see some of the feedback that our messaging from some people that maybe our messaging hasn't been consistent. And I always hear the feedback and I take it. Like, feedback is, is great. I will say from early on, we would say we when everybody plays, time. we all win. Like, how do we get in a place where everybody can play video games? And we've made different progress on PC. Oh, yeah, no now, like, there. PC is a huge business for us. We love that we have so many PC players more than it's we've ever had. It's free to play, but you Our can only make one character. So well. But I think if you sit back well, you can play and most you try of the to game. frame this industry through the lens of the tradition of who sold a console today, and that's the only solution to making gaming better. I think, you know, Xbox I thought it was free to play, but it's more like that. we love our consoles, demo. we love our PC players, but really it's about creators. Some people and players gave it a mixed review because of coming to them. <laughs> it has, admittedly, for all of us creators, players, it has been a, a weird generation because it started weird in this yeah. pandemic and. I'm curious, w would you do anything differently in this in this Xbox Ooh. Series generation if you oh, could kind of go back and, and tell yourself? <laughs> I'm, not, like, yeah. I'm not really a regrets Oil. guy. Like, I don't, like, there's a hundred decisions I make that, Enchant yeah, like, in hindsight, maybe I, I would make Ooh. it different with all the data. That's pretty But you cool. got to just bet. You got to bet on yourself and bet on the teams. Have a vision of what you're trying to do. When you get punched in the face, you get back up and you try to go do things. So, like, I, I'm not really one who looks back to and say, I wish I would have done this or that. Um, you know, if you're in a position like this, you, you just, with the team that we have, you just have to believe and you have to keep pushing forward and take the feedback from amazing customers that talk to us every day. Has the calculus changed? You kind of spoke to Game Pass a little bit and how, you know, how much of a value proposition it is, has increased after today even. But has the calculus changed on, on how much Game Pass 
subscriptions are valued at Microsoft versus direct sales. Like, you know, we're, we're cause now, it, when Game Pass started, it was, wow, nice. this sounds really cool. And you've pledged to put every first party release in oh, there. No. At the beginning, there weren't a lot of those, but yeah. now you're almost like you had a whole show full of them. So, kind of, what's oh, dude, how does, the Avowed, how does that looks so good like, too. How does Game Pass influence the the success of the business? The thing I look at every oh, morning yeah. is how many people played on our platforms and how long did they play. If they played through the subscription or they paid buying their games or they're playing a free to play game. I honestly, like, that's not the most important thing. I, so, you know, Game Pass, I love it. I think it's the thing I really love about Game Pass, let me think, in our show today, a game like Mixtape. Like, a game like Mixtape is a game that we can go, um, Nathan, Bell, and I can have a conversation and say, with a team that's been in, in Game Pass before, yeah. when you, you think about the studio behind, like they agent, had great uh... success. Now we're gonna do a second game or like Winter What's Burl, name? another like Mid just name? awesome game that we can go invest in and Game Pass gives us an <laughs> ability. Number is. You can go invest in Call of Duties and Diablos all day and we love that, but you also get to invest in new things that come out and we just think that's a, a really important part of the equation. So we don't have like one, subs no, Game Pass is up double digits. Like and in most of it's growing, we've like right. said it, PC is growing really well, cloud's growing really well. That's what but I'm like now. if somebody decides they want to buy their games and build their library, peace. Like there's, there's no, we need to turn everybody into this or that. We just want people to play. I want to talk about Fallout for <laughs> a second. So Ooh, fall you, you oh. guys are, currently having an, uh, an awesome pop culture moment fallout tv few. show yeah yeah, yeah, yeah so they just added a new so expansion good. to fallout 76. Uh, it's the first their first can, real expansion i can't help think about that a year or two ago i was sitting with todd howard with a camera rolling i don't and, know how good it's gonna be him, well, you know fallout 5 is that you want to do that yourself or is maybe now there's all these xbox studios you could you could maybe get have some help with it and said no i i want to that's gonna that's mine i'm yeah, gonna direct that yeah but does <laughs> todd likes his things and but does the does the massive success of something like fall like fallout i would i would argue is the, is xbox's biggest cultural moment in quite a while like it transcended outside of gaming yeah, yeah 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 and so you know after the tv show blows up and there's there'll be a season two and i'm sure it'll probably keep going past yeah. that do you do you talk to Todd about like you know you can't you can't stop the Elder Scrolls Six and say go do Fallout Five, but but you have oh, all these God. studios like do you have a conversation about like well how can oh we do Core Keeper was also a new, like a big in new showcase. Fallout while the the Iron and really uh, One Point is coming out show. yeah in a month or two. Todd's recognized the success of the television show <laughs> on his own. Elder Scrolls <laughs> Six, we're never gonna see that. Go and, it's it is amazing to see how gaming is now playing such a role all goes. Up in pop culture if you go back like as an old comic nerd i go back like 10 years and it seemed like every hollywood thing came from the comics and now you see video games and this art form that we've loved for so long this is actually kind of hard movie last of us fallout show like you see our creators like in our left. industry being recognized for the worlds and storytelling that they can go do. Um, <laughs> for us specifically, Fallout's been amazing. I would and love yeah, to see Elder Scrolls kind of 6, but I gave up hope on what he's doing. I'm not going to get into it, but I'll say Todd has Instead, recognized they the announced, um, his own. And Fallout 76, uh, the I new Doom, we're on the subject, and uh, have you seen the Elder Scrolls, Elder Scrolls Online? Because I know you get to take a look free at a to lot play. of stuff. All the DLC. And I, um, what was the other gonna, thing? I'll refrain from comment. <laughs> I think we all I forget know now. What, what you mean by that. That's Something right. else. Boomy. Boomy. Oh, Starfield Boomy. DLC. Oh my goodness. Well, and they just, time, they're so, like, you know, and you know, you right now, out, as of right now, we're, we're there's a new update now. for Starfield. Um, there's one, the community's one getting mods, right? About it's like, oh, I yeah. We actually might hear something about from you. I mean, you had a great show. But I'm the community not made mods could be but really no, well, cool. There's something that's we'll been see. rumored, that's been talked about. We talked about it on the pre-show. There was a big reaction from our audience here, and that is an Xbox handheld. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So oh, you that are, was his prediction guy, at the beginning of the show. I mean, you have the gamer score to prove it. Like you, <laughs> you walk the walk. You are not a guy that that runs the business 
and never touches a game. You you actually pretty much do nothing but <laughs> play video games. And I mean that in a co as a compliment. <laughs> I so, do work sometimes, but yeah, yeah. Yeah, I need to but try like, Final really Fantasy. Like the, I, loved, I don't I know the answer to my Olivia. secret questions. It's kind of true. The, uh, actually, I know the answers. You, you I don't know which one is the, the right secret question. Of, of go where the players are. You know, whether it's on PC, whether it's through so the So we should have Andy. I just need to mess I with think, it. So I think we you, should have Andy. Do you want to say anything I, No, I don't want to say I think you have to have Sarah on. Sarah Bond, our president <laughs> oh Xbox, which is awesome. Um, but, like, the future for us <laughs> in hardware is pretty awesome. And the work that the team is doing um, around different form factors, different ways to play. I had no I'm ammo. No about. Today was about the games. Yeah. We showed some of our our Gen 9 consoles, Series S, Series X, the work that we're doing. But we will have a time to come out and talk more about platform. And we can't wait to bring it to you. Right. I'm not going to let you have the hook play. Okay. One more try. <laughs> so hypothetically, 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 if, if Microsoft did an Xbox gaming handheld I don't think PC there's a dodge device, button in this. Would it be a Steam Deck-like dedicated hard piece of hardware that I can play offline or would it be something I would need a Wi-Fi connection to stream things from? No, I think if you're what I'm finding, I'll do it this way. So I like my ROG Ally, my oh, ROG Ally, my Lenovo Legion Go, fantastic, my Steam Deck. I think being able to play games locally is really important. Civ 7 coming out next year, you yeah. Can dude. Read between the lines. Uh, uh, Civ 6 is like three dollars uh, uh, I was right. thinking they're buying that. We're gonna take a very quick break, but we're not done with Phil. We're gonna bring in some friends, some Xbox There's another developers. game coming in too. So where, stay uh, tuned for that right after this here on IGN Live. It's supposed to be like Civ. Dude, I play usually, last time I bought a Civ game, I uh, tried the story mode and I was like, this is pretty cool, but I keep IGN losing to like the, the other kind of victories of besides military fast speeds and, and i was like man i want i just want to play a military victory so i made a custom game where it's military victory only and that custom game went on for like a hundred hours IGN so my whole playthrough is was one game and i think i got to like the very is, uh, end of it where we all had nukes and i basically won and i just i didn't finish oh, it but <laughs> this june IGN is the place for the biggest oh, in here. Live. Welcome back to IGN Live from across the industry. Let's do it. IGN store has I it need all. to figure out how to keep that. From clothes and collectibles to vinyl records, accessories, keep model money. kits, and action figures from the biggest and best franchises like The Legend of Zelda, Star Wars, Fallout, Dungeons and Dragons, and Domination more. Victory is Whatever very your hard. pop culture passion, you're guaranteed to find something you Especially love. Especially if you don't there beat them before nukes. There are new and nukes. exciting products hitting the store every week. Then you're screwed. Like the Wasteland Ready Fallout And the first person to get jets hoodie, and stuff which is pairs like perfectly with dominant your for compared to game. Plus, no, uh, high quality IGN store America has a huge like the powerful and spicy Star uh, Wars Dark Side advantage once you get to military age. We've even got merchandise for you to rock while tuning in to the IGN shows and podcasts you love. Or cap off a long day by relaxing to the soundtracks of your favorite video games, like Cyberpunk I never, I never, and The Last of Us. The reason why I've never played part, like that is because I don't know. You don't even need know. to leave the house to go there. Just head to store.ign.com to and to start shopping way. today. <laughs> the IGN store. You deserve it. But the Cinefix Top probably 100. pretty fun. A list so secretive, even we don't know what I think the last one I played was in 6, it was 5. Each episode will reveal one of the movies. Did I rush it? felt like I rushed it. was good. I liked it. Talk about why it belongs and finally find out where it ranks. Are you not entertained? Are any of the movies we've shown here even on the list? I have no idea. It's <laughs> right. Spiritual crazy. battles ah. convert your enemies. Join us as we Hell find yeah. out on Cinefix, IGN, and wherever you get your podcasts. Why so serious? Spencer is still with us. Districts. Also joining us, though, some friends from the Xbox family. Hugo Martin, the creative director on Doom, the Dark Ages at I, they, they all look really good. We there's one, there's one after five the, and before the six that I never Blizzard. played, too. The planet one. And from the Call of Duty Black Ops team at Treyarch, we have Different Miles planets. Leslie. Yes. Yes. Uh, all right, Hugo, <laughs> I want to start with you, my what friend, because uh, 
like Phil, I go back to the three and a half inch floppy disk days with Doom. <laughs> you guys have been such amazing caretakers of the Doom three inch franchise. Floppy days of and Doom. you're taking damn, dude. a hell of a swing here with the Dark yeah. Ages. Like the, the play it safe version would have been to do Doom Eternal, but slightly better. Right. But the Dark Ages is not the safe play. You are doing some interesting Dude's stuff basically here. A boomer. Um, it is quite the pivot. Uh, it's arguably the most, the biggest pivot for any mainline Doom game. Yeah. And so, uh, I, I thought oh, maybe well, the, it, the Doom Slayer storyline seemed pretty wrapped up at the end of the the DLC. Well, this is a prequel to exactly. Doom 2016. So, uh, how quickly do you land oh, on this prequel it. concept when you're kicking around ideas after Doom Eternal? Oh, we wanted to make this game for many years. Uh, uh, that first, in the Slayer's Testament, uh, that, you know, in the first stage, in the first battle, when the shadows first lengthened, you're going to play that game. That's what Doom the Dark Ages is. Well, that's... I wonder, should I switch to another yes. game now? <laughs> Love it. Um... How much is melee combat going to factor here versus traditional Rika. Doom gun combat? Yeah, it's oh, a Sacrifier. fantasy sci-fi like FPS, one a medieval war against hell, and when you say the word medieval, you got to have melee weapons. So you saw on the teaser. Yeah. Uh, this one's an open beta, yeah, he's got level a, zero uh, extraction. Flail. He's, he's beating the guy to, to, to a pulp with that. that. You use your hands, you use your shield. Right, uh, each of these things kind of come together 